can sit, sit in the office all day. We are organizers. We have to be organizers. We have to go back to our roots of owning our streets and our neighborhoods, right? Today, I'm counting on you to do that. Today, I'm counting on you to rewrite labor's next chapter by going in there and actually doing the, the work that we have to do. So, so, I don't know how many of you know who I am and why I'm here, why this guy, I'm having a hard time understanding the word he's saying is at the FLCIO. So let me tell you a little bit about me, which would give you an insight to your new reinvigorated labor movement in the FLCIO. You know, Victoria talked about I used to be at Front Lash in the 90s. I used to work not in the basement of the FLCIO, my office used to be in the sub-basement of the AFL-CIO. Our office used to get flooded every other week. Some pipe breaks and all that stuff. From that, I'm on the eighth floor, top floor of the AFL-CIO today. You see, I did not have the privilege of being born in this country. I was born far, far away from here in Africa, in this place called Ethiopia. I grew up hearing gunfires around me every day and every night because of civil war. And me and a couple of my friends always used to fantasize about you, about this place called America. And more than anything else, what we wanted was, you want to get up in the morning, you want to dream about what you want to be and press, press through that dream. Go to work and be respected for the job you're doing. So we just didn't dream about it. Little kids, we decided to walk to a desert and to a refugee camp in the Sudan. And today is a special day for me. Today is a different Thursday. I was talking with Secretary Treasurer Schuller outside. On March 21st, 1983, I got the opportunity to migrate to this country as a political refugee. And my country, my adopted mother country, the United States, took me in practically 33 years ago today. That makes me, by my new birthday, a young worker, right? <laughs> so I'm going to come out here and tell you I'm one of you. So from there, I got here because I wanted to be an organizer. And from the bottom of my heart, I'm still an organizer. I want to be an organizer tomorrow. I want to be an organizer next year. I want to be an organizer for the rest of my life. Because the labor movement is not about politics. The labor movement is about organizing, right? Yes, we do politics. But if we do politics, and that politics does not lead into growth, that politics is not leading us into providing a voice for more workers at their workplaces, the politics for us is for nothing. So, young people, it's up to you. This is your movement. This is your labor movement. Not my labor movement, but it's your labor movement. It's about your tomorrow. So, if we agree on one thing, let's agree on this. Let's do politics, but our politics be driven by our agenda instead of politics driving our agenda. Do we agree? <laughs> and like I said, our agenda has to be growth. Our agenda has to be more people having the ability at their workplace to sit across the table from their employers and demanding what is rightfully theirs. When we do that, we will have justice for students. 
When we do that, we'll have justice for women. We'll have justice for minorities. We'll have justice for the gay lesbian community. When we do that, when we do that, we'll reclaim the America that I risk my life to walk through a desert to come to. So today is about action. But today also has to be about dreaming, about innovating, and about acting. See, I want you to think about what's possible. Yesterday, you heard a great speech from our president, Rich Franca. I know Rich has been a great leader of our movement. But I want you to understand, he was a son of miners. He didn't come from the corporate side or from rich families. And by the age of 35, he is a president of his union. You should aspire to be that. <laughs> Ms. Schuller, our great leader here, didn't come from Walt Disney. She is a daughter of a lineman, an electrician, and utility workers. And she is proud to call herself the youngest and the first female secretary treasurer of the AFL-CIO. You should aspire to that. If me, an immigrant with a funny accent, can stand up here and tell you I'm the, I'm the executive vice president of the AFL-CIO, there is no reason why all of you should not be aspiring to be the leaders of tomorrow's, today's labor movement, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce some of your peers who are gonna be leading us into the action today. First, from the Steelworkers Union, the oil refinery strike that you have been talking about, Marcos Valle, Marcos Camar here. <laughs> United Steel Workers and the Young Workers Advisory Council. We were originally going to take a trip out to Whiting so that we could show our support for the striking workers, but they're very close to reaching a return to work agreement. The way that oil bargaining works is we bargain the pattern or the master agreement on a national level, and then we have to sit down at each local table and settle the issues at that site. And with that site being so close to going back to work, we just figured it'd be better to you know, leave them alone. But what I'm here to talk to you today about is another fight, a fight that affects us all, and it's the fight for 15. Um, you know, the fight for 15 workers that were actually supposed to come with us today, when their supervisors found out what they were going to be doing, they scheduled them to work <clears throat> so that they couldn't attend the action. And, you know, that's a shame. I mean, 157 million kids' meals are served in the United States every month. You're talking about people that are good enough to feed our children. Why shouldn't they be able to afford to feed their right? The fact that 15 workers were with us the entire time we were out on the picket line, they still continue to support us. You know, there's no difference in the fight for 15 or the fight that we have on the picket line in the oil industry. You have fast food workers getting burned. You have fast food workers fighting for safer, better working conditions. You know, it's not just their fight. It's all of our fight. You know, we all need to stand up and support each other. We're going to be there as long as we have to. You know, we're going to be there with them today. We'll be there with them tomorrow. We'll be there as long as this fight takes. So thank you very much. We appreciate it, guys. <laughs> 